Under a blaze of Texas sun, Max rolled left, arm cocked for the pass, looking for his receiver, a teen named Calvin Blue. When the kid broke through a pack of defenders and slanted across the meadow, Max spiraled the football toward him, hitting the young would-be tailback in the hands. Calvin tucked the ball away and raced for the orange pylons. Touchdown. Calvin juked and jived in the makeshift end zone. Can't touch this! Can't touch this! He spiked the ball into the mowed grass, then strutted past his opponents, taunting. Sorry to make y'all eat my dirt. All right, Calvin, bring it back. Nice play. We're all amazed. Max had been around football his whole life. It was his passion, next to Jesus, Jade, and the law. And he'd never seen a 16-year-old cut and run the ball like Calvin. The boys gulped water from the cooler. Max reached for his shirt tossed on the ground. Today was shirts and skins game. The last. Taking a long drink from his own water bottle, Max dumped the rest over his sweaty head. The cool wetness ran down his hot face and into the collar of the t-shirt that swung loose about his waist. Between fasting before the Lord, ranch work, and afternoon football, Max's lawyer physique had been whittled down and chiseled. He whistled for them to huddle up. Calvin arrived first and propped his arm on Max's shoulder, sweating and panting, his dark skin glistening. Good job today, everyone. I'm proud of you. Dale, nice crab block on Sam here. Max jutted his elbow into Big Sam's ribs. He was, what, 15, 16, and twice Dale's size. And Tucker, you created the hole for Calvin's touchdown. The shy, sandy blonde boy kicked at a clump of grass. He was lean and built, with undisciplined athletic prowess because he lacked the confidence to develop his skill. And you. Max turned to the cocky star player leaning on his shoulder, then bounced the ball against his head. Remember, every great player needs a team. Coach. Calvin clapped his hand to his chest. You think I don't appreciate my homeboys? Just keep it in mind. Max took a few more minutes to encourage the rest of the players in the huddle. He practiced what he wanted to say next, his goodbye speech, but emotion gummed up his words. This is the last day of camp because it's my last day at the ranch. He exhaled, fighting the tears behind his eyes. Why was this moment so hard? Something had happened in his heart when he started working with these Colby, Texas teens. They were good kids, but adrift, looking for a safe place to land. I'm going to miss y'all. Thanks for coming. You've, you've impacted me. Max patted his hand over his heart. Every afternoon for six weeks, a Randall County Rec Center bus drove the kids to the ranch. 40 minutes out, 40 minutes back. Not one boy ever missed a day. The bus driver said he'd never seen kids stay so committed to a program. Maybe, Max decided, it was because he needed them as much as they needed him. Axel Crowder, the man who ran the Outpost Rehab Ranch, suggested the camp one evening after he and Max had talked football. And since Max had hours in his day to fill, he agreed. Besides, it was football. Say no more. He watched his team file onto the bus, a missing-them sensation traveling across his chest. When the last one got on, Calvin hopped off. Got something on your mind, Calvin? Max started gathering the gear. So, no more ball, coach? Calvin said. They're letting you out of this nut farm? It's risky, but they have to cut me from the herd. After three months of a lot of face-to-the-ground time, Max knew he had to face Jade and the dirge he'd left playing in her heart. I miss my wife and my son. He stuffed footballs into a duffel bag. You got a kid? No fooling. Calvin picked up a ball and tossed it between his hands. The bus driver tooted the horn, but he waved it off. He's almost two. Max didn't admit he'd only held his son once in his young life before March rolled around. Then all the buried lies surfaced when Rice McClure died. Think he'll play football? If he has any talent. If he wants to play. I got talent for it. Max tossed the duffel into the bed of the outpost pickup. About as much as any kid I've ever seen. 
Really? Who've you seen? Ain't you a lawyer or something? Yeah, I'm a lawyer, but I played in high school, a year in college. Used to coach youth league, sort of what we did here this summer. I thought so, I thought so. Seemed you knew what you were doing. The bus beeped. Calvin, the bus is leaving. The driver inched forward. Calvin gazed over his shoulder, but didn't flinch. Our football here stinks. Can't keep a coach. Five in six years. Yeah, I know. The outpost was just on the edge of Colby, Texas, a panhandle city that once reveled in state football championships. But in the last decade, something fierce went wrong with Colby High football, and no one knew how to fix it. I hear the coaches quit or get fired. Yep, the more we lose, coach, the worse the coaches. Who wants a job with the Colby Warriors? It'll kill a guy's career.